Your words, spoken by faith, activate the blessing wall around you. Learn from Kenneth Copeland today on the Believer's Voice of Victory how to make a declaration of faith and release your angels to assist in your healing and protection. Let's get to the 91st song. There are three different speakers in this song, starting with you and me. There's Jesus talking to me about our Father. That's Jesus talking to you about your Father. Because of that, son, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For, because, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all of thy ways. What ways? All of the ways from verse 3 down through verse 10. It's angels. It's angels. It's the wall of the blessing. Do you not remember? Don't you remember when Satan came up before before the Father? And he said, does Job serve you for nothing? Now listen to what had Satan so, so hacked, so ticked off about Job. Does he serve you for nothing? You have blessed him. Residing in you right now, if you're a born again child of God, the blessing of Abraham, the very same blessing he was talking about, the very same blessing. It started with Adam, went to Noah, went to Abraham, went to Job. The same blessing. It's dwelling in you. For if you be in Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Hallelujah. Now listen to what he said. You have blessed him and there is a wall around him. King James says a hedge. It's a wall. What is it? It's the wall of that blessing. And up until then, the devil hadn't been able to get through that wall. Well, God is not the one that gave the devil permission to get in there. Don't get that idea, that traditional, I don't want to say it. <laughs> and and, and I, I have to admit, just on the surface, if you don't study it, you don't know anything about the blessing, you don't know anything about faith, and you don't know any, and you don't listen, ever listen to God, you'd think God just said, well, go on, get him, Satan, he'll probably be all right. No, he did not. Job opened the door with fear. He kept making the same sacrifice for his family continually, 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 and he kept saying the same thing, let, let, lest they curse God. Well, Satan accused him of cursing God. He said, he'll curse God to your face. That was the only sin involved. Now, Job made a lot of mess ups. Who hadn't? But there was only one sin involved here. It was cursing God. Well, of course, Satan had to get cursing God on their mind, trying to get them to commit it. His wife did it. She's the reason the family got killed, not Job. She did it and told him, why don't you just curse God and die? Thanks a lot, Mama, <laughs> for your help here. <laughs> well, see, she, she, she didn't know. She's under a lot of pressure. The devil was pushing from every direction. Anyway, I wanted you to see the blessing wall. Part and major piece of the blessing 
are the angels that support it. That wall is up, glory to God. That's what happens in this 91st Psalm. That wall comes up and it's working right now. That it's, it's working right now. There's faith working in you that hadn't worked in a long time. There's more faith working in you and just storming through you right now. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We're, we're, we're there. Now, I want you to notice it now. Get this with me. Get this with me. Praise the Lord. He'll give his angels charge over you. <clears throat> they shall bear you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Every time we get in the airplane, whether I'm flying in the front seat or I'm riding in the back seat, no mind. Every time, every time, before the power comes up, I lay my hands on the side of the airplane and I say, Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood over this airplane. I plead the blood over me, over Dwayne, Gloria, whomever else is in there, for protection against every evil spirit, every evil wicked person, every evil thing, every evil plan of the devil is bound and stopped and thwarted. Ministering angels, lift us up in your hands, lest our feet dash against a stone and keep us in all of our ways according to the 91st Psalm and bless our partners in the name of Jesus beyond measure. Every time. Gloria and I get in the car. We do the same thing. I get on a motorcycle, um, start the engine, and just sit right there in the driveway or wherever I am and plead the blood over me and on the, that motorcycle, this motorcycle will bump nobody. Nobody will bump it. Glory to God. There ain't no way it can fall over. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and bless my partners beyond me, according to the 91st Psalm. You ought to do that every time you get in the car. And particularly paying attention to the greater one that lives within you. you. I mean, you may be just standing there in the kitchen some evening, just washing dishes or something, and just, you know, just stand there kind of quietly praying in the spirit. And, and all of a sudden, it'll come up on the inside of you 91st Psalm. Plead the blood right now. I plead the blood. I'm just do it right now. Oh, glory to God. Now, those of you that have school children, that ought to be your morning ritual before those babies leave that house. We're not having no shooting in their school. We're not having a shooting where I work. They're not having a shooting in our church. No, bless God, there's a wall up around this place. But, but you have to maintain the wall. You can't allow cracks to get in it. That means you have to watch over it every day. And don't forget the angels. Hallelujah. Someone was healed in the area of the lungs uh, asthma, bronchitis, and so forth. Uh, that healing's been going on all morning, but I just realized it just as I was speaking right there then. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now, here's the Father speaking. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder and the young lion, and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Now, here's the Father. Because... The father is saying, Jesus, see, he's talking to Jesus. He, he, and he says to Jesus, son, Kenneth has set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he's known my name. He shall call upon me and I'll answer him. I'll be with him in trouble. I'll deliver him and honor him. And with long life, Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? <laughs> Hallelujah. Woo, glory, 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 glory. Now, I'm reading 
from the 90th Psalm, footnote. Now, this is the reason I'm reading from the hard copy instead of uh, from, a, uh, from my iPad or the, my telephone, because it doesn't have the footnotes. This Psalm is credited to Moses, who is interceding with God to remove the curse which made it necessary for every Israelite over 20 years of age when they rebelled against God at Kadesh Barnea, Barnea to die before reaching the promised land in Numbers 14, 26 through 35. Moses said most of them are dying at 70. This number has often been mistaken as a set span of life for all mankind. It was intended to refer to anyone except those Israelites under the curse during the particular 40 years. 70 years has never been the average span of life for humanity. When Jacob, the father of the 12 tribes, had reached 130, he complained that he had not attained the years of his immediate ancestors. In fact, Moses himself lived to be 120. Aaron, 123. Miriam, several years older. Joshua, 110. Note as well that the millennium, in the millennium, a person dying at 100 will still be thought of as a child. With long life, I was satisfied. We do not have privilege or any right to choose an arbitrary number about what long life is. Genesis 6, 3. That's pretty well right in the front, isn't it? It's only six chapters into the first book of the Bible. So that establishes, by the law of first reference, that establishes this number because God said it for the rest of the book. In the third verse, and the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. The New Living Living Translation translates it like this. He is only flesh, and his normal life, normal life, is 120 years. Now, how does this come into our daily lives today? I'll give you one very, very strong example. When you get into the book of Leviticus, which is well after Genesis, and you get into what to eat and what not to eat, that's based on living 120 years. And it's really... It's really not all that hard a thing to do. Well, it's hard. Well, it's under the law. Yeah, it is. So, that's not the Bible. Well, the Bible said we can take anything. No, it didn't. Yeah, it did. All things are except. No, it didn't. I know it did. No, it didn't. <laughs> you just think it did. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Yeah, I wouldn't have said it if I, if I couldn't prove it. Thank you, Lord. You believe that? First yes. Timothy, the fourth chapter. Now, if you start reading In the fourth verse, for every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it's received with thanksgiving. Well, now see there, Brother Cope and I can eat all the pig I want to eat. Yeah, you can eat all the pig you want to eat. I'm not telling you you can't. But it's not good for you. Well, what does that say? I'm fixing to tell you if you say, hush. <laughs> Do you realize there's no commas in the Greek text? 
commas are an English thing. Put in by the translators. Now notice something here. Go back up. Verse 2, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, what? Forbidding to marry. Now, we know that's wrong, forbidding to marry. Forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from meats, comma, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth for every creature of God. Now, wait a minute. Go back to the neighborhood that this verse lives in. These people were forbidding to marry and forbidding to eat food that was on the good list. Not the whole list, good or bad. They were forbidding to eat what God said he created for food. So if you go in there and find what God said he created for food, and then the others he created for some other purpose. He didn't create them to eat. He didn't create snakes to eat. He didn't create alligators to eat. I've never eaten snake, but I've eaten alligator, and it tastes good. But you ain't supposed to be eating alligator meat. <laughs> He's a reptile. But there are other things that are a whole lot more subtle than that. And I can get, I, I, I could start making you real ticked here if I just isn't. Um, <laughs> shrimp. Crab legs. Catfish. Oh, son, don't. Don't get rid of my catfish. I'm not getting rid of anything for you but I'm going to live 120 years and serve God 120 years and preach the word of faith 120 years. And I'm going to live it without cancer and I'm going to live it without heart troubles and heart... <laughs> hey! But I'm not preaching the law. I'm preaching faith, glory to God, and you can do whatever you and Jesus decide to do. But for me and my house, we're going for the 120. Well, Gloria is going for 115 because we're going at the same time. <laughs> Amen. And Jerry said he's going to 110 because he's going the same time I'm going. We've been a team up there. Now there ain't no, you know, no use breaking it up then just so he can live a 10 more years. But he can if he wants to, you know, if he gets up there. By 120, he may be six feet tall. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Can you see, though, can, can you see how just a little bit of adjustment there can make all of the difference in your life? And at first, I began to look at that, and I thought, boy, oh, hey, 120 years. And then I heard it. He said, Kenneth, that's just as much my word as by my stripes ye were healed. He said, you can't do it by yourself, son. And he said, I'm not commanding you to do it. I'm asking you to do it. He said, I need it in the earth. He said, there are anointings from 80 to 90 to 100 to 110, 115. That I don't, he said, I don't even have them in the earth and I need them. I said, done, sir. I'll do it. I'll change my diet. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm on a mission now, an imp a, a mission impossible, glory to God. And I will, but it's no longer impossible. It's not even probable. It is a done deal, glory to God. 
and I don't care how many hours a day I have to hit that weight room. I don't care how many hours and how many miles I have to run. I don't care what I have to do. I'm doing it, praise God, for my commander in chief needs me. He's called me out and I volunteered for special mission and I'm not going to back down. And today is the day for you to get healed. Today is the day for your miracle. I've been having back pain since January, and I even had an MRI just like the end, of like May 30th, um, and they showed three bulging discs and nerve pain and um, all that kind of stuff. And so it's just been really painful to sit. This is Jessica from uh, Antelope, California, and she had been contending for these three bulging discs that were in her back. And at, during the meetings, her pain returned, and she had to actually stand in the back of the room for the Thursday and Friday sessions. But when she came in today, she was able to sit through the entire service, and she says she feels so good. All the pain in her back is completely gone. Isn't it wonderful? Yes. Hallelujah. But today, the healing even started before, like I walked in and I said, okay, God, I am taking my healing because it's gotten progressively better. But I said, I want it every whit whole. I am taking my healing. And I've been watching BVOVN and watching Sister Gloria Copeland, all her healing school videos since January. I mean, it's been on my house 24 seven. And I've just been saying, I'm taking my healing. I am sitting in this service healed and whole. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Uh, yeah. Say it again, Lord. Breast cancer is healed right now. Lumps in the breast are shrinking up. Some of them are gone. Some of them are already. You can tell it. Check yourself out. Glory to God. Sylvia had a lump, and she said she had a lump in her breast, and now it's gone. Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Today. 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 Wonderful. When he said breast cancer was healed. I received it, and it's gone. Amen. Hallelujah. Whoa. Amen. Amen. Well, glorify the Lord. Come on. Praise the Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Marvelous. Thank you, Lord. Still under the power of God. Remember, in the world of energy, there's potential energy and there's moving or kinetic energy. Faith is always kinetic. And faith releases its ability when you release it. Amen. Kathy? Yeah. This is... Joe, originally from Sweetwater, Texas, yeah. living in Bakersfield now. He got saved last night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. And he had a diagnosis of stomach cancer. The pain has left him in the stomach oh, and the back. Thank you, Lord. Awesome. So no pain. The pain is gone in your tummy. I've had four chemotherapies. I've had 11 transfusions. I'm ready for that black demon to leave town. Oh, it's gone. Uh, it's gone. Amen. And then the surgery. And I'm here with Kenny Cobus following for the 125 years. And that's all I want to do. Amen. Well, let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise your Lord. Praise Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Father, we are so thankful. Just lift Thank your hands. You, Tell the Lord how grateful we are for everything we've seen. Everything we know he's done and continues to do, we give you praise. Hallelujah. God's word is life and healing to me. I am strong. My life is full of God's wholeness and abundant blessings. Become God inside minded. Think like he thinks. Choose the healing and wellness he has promised you in his word with the Harvest of Health Package. This life-changing set of resources includes And Jesus Healed Them All, a book by Gloria Copeland. God wants you well, and Jesus has already healed you, so take hold of his word as your prescription for life and health. The Healing Scriptures CD builds up your spirit in the word. Get rid of unforgiveness, choose to walk in love, and experience wholeness as you listen to anointed scriptures read by Kenneth Copeland. What you plant in your heart grows. The Harvest of Health, a mini book by Gloria Copeland, encourages you to take God's promises and confess them for your healing every day. Your Harvest of Health is on the way. Be sure to request your free Harvest of Health package from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. 
Tap into the powerful promises of healing for you in God's Word. Go to kcm.org.uk forward slash TV special or call 01225 787 310. Free offer good for 30 days. Postage charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. It is the Father God's will and even His pleasure that you be healed. His healing power is available to you because the Father sent Jesus to bear the whole curse, including sin, including sickness, all sickness, the Bible says in Deuteronomy. He bore it on the cross to redeem you from it. He paid the price for the new birth of your spirit, the healing of your body, your soul, your mind, will, your emotions. There is nothing left out of this package and nothing too big for our Jesus. To request your free Harvest of Health packet so you can learn more about what he's done for you. Uh, you it's two books and a CD. You request it at kcm.org. You can listen and read, get the word in your heart and hear from the word of God what his word says about your healing. To receive your promises as words that are spoken to you by Jesus himself. Think about that for a second. When he wrote to us in the Bible, Jesus himself is saying, Kelly, be delivered. Mark, be free. Jill, be sound. Sally, be healed. Whatever your name is, he knows your name and he's called you those things. So you just have to choose to believe the word of God. Put it first place in your life. When you have pain in your body, put what his word says about by his stripes were healed in first position to speak to you and you can resist the pain. So requesting that today again on kcm.org. I call you healed. No more torment, no more anxiety, no more depression. Healed in your body, healed in your soul. So if you need prayer, KCM has a prayer line. All of our offices around the world have prayer ministers trained in the Word of God. They will pray in faith for you. This is Kelly Copeland reminding you that Jesus is Lord. The partners and friends of Kenneth Copeland Ministries have made today's Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast and study notes available for you to receive free as digital download. Go to our website, kcm.org.uk for details. Keep your faith strong with the Word of God and step into a year of abundant harvest. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. November 7th through the 9th, join us at our nation's capital for the Washington, D.C. Victory Campaign at the Hilton Memorial Chapel in Woodbridge, Virginia, USA. Join us December 31st to ring in the new year at Eagle Mountain International Church in Newark, Texas, USA. April 2nd through the 4th, Kenneth Copeland welcomes you to the 2020 Branson Victory Campaign at Faith Life Church in Branson, Missouri, USA. For more information, visit kcm.org events. 